This video will be discussing two psychological theories, bottom-up processing and top-down processing. Now, basically, these two theories are psychologists' attempts to explain how we first of all sense, and then secondly, process, and lastly, analyze the information that we sense around us. Now, starting off with bottom-up processing. The main idea of bottom-up processing is that the stimulus influences the perception. So we start off with no preconceived idea of what's being sensed, and then we allow the stimulus to influence the perception of what it is that is being sensed. Now, this is a theory made in 1966 by a psychologist by the name of James Gibson, and it falls under the idea of reductionism, which is basically having a huge object and then breaking it down to smaller and smaller objects. Now, another name for bottom-up processing is data-driven processing. And examples of bottom-up processing or data-driven processing include road markings and blind taste tests. Now, we're going to explain. Now, take a look at the picture on the right. We have a cyclist on a red part of the road that's crossing the road. Now, we can tell that the red area is exclusively for pedestrians and cyclists because of bottom-up processing. Because we're sensing, or seeing more accurately, uh, that they're allowed to cross the road through the signs and through the colors on the road. And blind taste tests are is also an example of bottom-up processing because we use our sense of tasting to understand what it is that we ate, you know, because we don't know, we, don't have any, we do not have any previous knowledge. So again, the sensation comes first and the perception comes second. So this is bottom-up processing. Moving on to top-down processing. The main idea is that we use background knowledge to influence perception, right? This is totally different from bottom-up processing. Bottom-up processing, top-down processing, totally different. Top-down processing, we use background knowledge. Background knowledge can consist of emotions, motivations, uh, expectations, memories, lots of things. And these influence perception. Now, this is a theory made by a British psychologist called Richard Gregory, uh, four years actually after bottom-up, and it was a response to bottom-up processing. And examples of this, of this theory, top-down processing, include looking for Waldo and where's Waldo and also the Stroop effect. But let's focus on the Stroop effect. Sorry, I think my face is a little bit too big here. But you can see that this is a Stroop effect. Now, there are many examples of the Stroop effect, but the most well-known one is a person will misread the word, a written word, because it's written in a different color, you know. So, for example, I have a list right here. And I'll ask someone to read out the first word, which says green, but oftentimes they'll say red. They won't say green because there's a mismatch between the, the written word and the color that the word is printed in. Uh, and we use top-down processing because we first understand and then process the concept of reading all of the words, the whole list of words. And then we first understand and process it, right? And then we try not to identify the color, but then automatically, without our control, we'll talk about the word. So it's basically causing us a delay when we try to do the different tasks, right? We're, we're trying really hard to just read the list of words, but then we'll read the list of colors. Or maybe when we're asked to just read like the colors the words are in, we'll accidentally read the words. There's a mismatch, there's a delay. So this is top-down processing. Now, when it comes to looking for Waldo and where's Waldo, uh, we actually, this is actually also top-down processing. Because we have a previous memory, right? We know how Waldo looks. We're directed, we, we were told how Waldo looks. We have a previous memory of how he looks. And we're goal-driven to find Waldo. So we'll look through count, like so many uh, pictures or uh, characters or objects or whatever. And we'll know how Waldo looks. And we're goal-driven to find Waldo. We have a purpose like, okay, we're looking at this picture to actually find Waldo. Uh, the reason that this wouldn't be bottom-up processing is because... If we're using bottom-up processing, we'll just be seeing lots of characters, lots of objects, lots of things in the picture going on. And we wouldn't really have a goal or purpose to look at the picture. Um, and th therefore, top-down processing is also applicable to looking for Waldo and where is Waldo. All right, that's it. I hope that made sense. Enjoy your day.